Hello everyone, I'm Will, the co-host of the Everything Podcast, and welcome in to the latest episode of the Only Movies show, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm gonna be breaking the rules a bit on this episode. I'm gonna be talking about Star Wars TV shows instead of Star Wars movies, but Star Wars did originate as a movie franchise with George Lucas's original trilogy that ran from 1977 to 1983, and none of these TV shows would exist without George Lucas's original trilogy. So I think that qualifies Star Wars TV shows as a worthy discussion for the only movie show, and I think you're going to be super excited about the topic that we have in store for today. I am going to be ranking all five live action Star Wars TV shows. And even though ah Ahsoka is not complete yet, we're now halfway through that show, so we've got a pretty good feel of what it's going to be like. So I feel like we've had enough of Ahsoka to where we can now rank all five live action Star Wars TV shows, and that's exactly what I'm going to do here on this episode of The Only Movies Show. Number five on my list is going to be a controversial choice. This show was critically acclaimed and the critics absolutely loved that it was about regular people and not Jedi, Sith, or any of the normal things that you see in Star Wars, but I'm sorry. For me, Andor is number five on my list. And when I watched this show, I was bothered by how slow the pacing was. But when I've had the time to step back and really reflect on it, what I realize is my issue wasn't that it was slow. It was that I found it confusing. And it is so much harder to get into something when you're confused what's going on in it. So that automatically puts Andor at number five on my list. Number four on my list is The Book of Boba Fett. And let's be honest, we could really call this The Mandalorian Season 2.5, but since Mando does not show up until the final three episodes of the show, I'm going to go ahead and call it by its real name, The Book of Boba Fett. And listen, I think this show has three great episodes. Episode two, where Boba Fett gets inducted into the tribe, and episodes five and six with The Mandalorian. Episode six also includes appearances from, wait for it, Ahsoka Tano, Luke Skywalker, and Cad Bane. And even though I liked the episodes that were not 2, 5, and 6, they just were not on the level of the three Star Wars shows that I'm going to talk about next. And that is why The Book of Boba Fett is number four on my list and not higher. Number three on my list is Ahsoka. And I've got to be honest with you. I think when this show is all said and done, it could be at number two. I really feel that way. As a Rebels fan, this show has been everything that I could have asked for so far. And usually when I watch Star Wars shows, I'm not worried that my heroes are going to die. But I was legitimately scared for Ahsoka and Sabine's lives in episode four. And I give the show massive credit for that because I am not scared for my heroes' lives in Star Wars content like that very often. And I do think they could have done Hera's look a bit better. I think she looks a bit different than how she looked in Rebels. And I think they're having Sabine act more spazzy and immature then they had her act in Rebels. So a couple nitpicks right there, but still, 
as I said earlier, this show has been everything that I could have asked for as a Rebels fan. And episode four was as good Star Wars content as I have ever seen. Ahsoka is number three on my list. Could and probably will be number two when it's all said and done. Number two on my list is Obi-Wan Kenobi. I do not know why this show does not get more love. Star Wars fans, what do you want out of a show? Really, answer that question for me. Um, I guess for some people, it was Andor, but not me. That was too confusing for me. The, the type of Star Wars show that I love? This show! Ewan McGregor portrayed Obi-Wan Kenobi beautifully. We got two epic battles between Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader, and we even got appearances from Palpatine and Qui-Gon Jinn in the finale. And also, episode five was as good Star Wars content as I have ever seen. There was nothing more that I could have possibly asked for from the Obi-Wan Kenobi show I believe it is underrated, deserved more love, and it is absolutely number two on my list. And allow me to say this, if I end up putting Ahsoka above it when Ahsoka is all said and done, that will be no disrespect to Obi-Wan Kenobi at all. I love that show, I will continue to love that show, and I will always love that show because it was everything that I could have asked for as a Star Wars fan. Number one on my list is, that's right, you guessed it, at the end of the day, how could it not be The Mandalorian? And look, I know that season three of The Mandalorian caused a lot of controversy. And yes, I wished that they would have kept the story focused on Mando and Grogu instead of going off and making and making it about Bo-Katan and Mandalore and other things. And even though episodes three and six of season three of The Mandalorian were the worst two episodes of the show, in my opinion, still, the issue to me with season three was not a quality issue. It was just me as a fan wishing that they kept the story focused on the Mandalorian and Grogu, because that's what made me fall in love with the show in the first place. But, even despite that, I still really enjoyed season three, and seasons one and two were a work of art. There is no way that any Star Wars episode will top the Mandalorian season two finale with Luke Skywalker coming in. That was flat out epic in every single Star Wars series. I judge against The Mandalorian seasons one and two. They are the standard. They will always be the standard. I would be shocked if they are ever not the standard. They were that good and they deserve all of the praise. We would not have any of these other live action Star Wars TV shows if not for The Mandalorian seasons one and two. And I don't know what higher praise I could possibly give The Mandalorian than that. And there you have it. That is my list of the Star Wars live action TV shows Andor at five, The Book of Boba Fett at four, Ahsoka at three, Obi-Wan Kenobi at two, and The Mandalorian at one. I look forward to seeing if Ahsoka can move its way into that number two slot. I'm sorry, there's no way nothing will ever uh, pass the Mandalorian because of what I just said about seasons one and two uh, being the standard. But will Ahsoka move into my number two spot? I'm excited to see if it does. And I would love to hear your ranking of the five live-action Star Wars TV shows let me know in the chat, and thank you so much for watching this episode of The Only Movies Show.